Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time, this one's from my good friend Efri. And it's for the Hitman's Bodyguard from 2017. Which there was a sequel, which I will get to that next time. But, uh, <clears throat> once again, for folks out there, thanks for watching. And for those who want to send any type of requests, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, rankings lists, reactions, whatever it may be. Feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And uh, The Hitman's Bodyguard is a film I enjoyed uh, ever since I saw it back in 2017. I believe I had it in my top 10 favorites of the year. There was quite a good bit of films that year. I think we had a John Wick film come out. I want to say John Wick 2 came out that year, which I enjoyed. I believe Blade Runner 2049 came out that year. I also enjoyed that one. Forgive me if I'm wrong about the years. This one I, I know was in the top 10. Because I thought Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson played off each other fairly well. And they were entertaining. Patrick Hughes surprised the hell out of me. Because he handled the action scenes very effectively. Because the last film he did was The Expendables 3. And that was not the case. It was a truncated, lame, PG-13 rating. Uh, the stars were not used to their best effect. You had a horrible new cast... Ronda Rousey, her best bud, the mole, uh, some guy who knew how to parachute, some other guy who knew how to get his ass kicked and rode a motorcycle, uh, some, uh, I, I don't even remember who the hell else was in it. Someone had a shotgun, I'm talking about the new team, just a lame movie, it's been supposed to be horrible. And then I'm like, wait, he's directing this? Wow, he was impressive. Maybe he had a bit more freedom, maybe be able to... Develop the R rating. And the action scenes are rather solid. And the plot. The plot you just say is. Whatever. Meaning. Gary Oldman is a dictator. He's on trial. They need a witness. The witness is going to be Sam Jackson. Who's a hitman. So then Ryan Reynolds is a bodyguard. First scene in the film. He's on a job. His. His job, so to speak, gets killed on his watch. And then sometime later, he's down in the dumps. Until ultimately his ex-girlfriend calls for help. And that's to protect Sam Jackson, get him from point A to point B. And along the way, the two argue, fight, curse, curse some more. Denta fights with the bad guys. Sam's doing this because his wife or his girlfriend, uh, Selma Hayek, is in jail. And if he does this, Selma Hayek will be released from prison. Ryan Reynolds does this because he's doing it because of his ex girlfriend. But also, maybe they did his big bodyguard job back in the future. And what really carried the film was two things well done. Well edited action sequences. You have some good car chases. You have some good fisticuffs. And. The chemistry. Chemistry between Ryan Rose and Samuel Jackson. Were on point in my opinion. And sometimes with these type of films. The plot may be typical. But. It's the chemistry that could. Make it or break it. And Ryan Reynolds, I've even complained that, oh, he plays the same type of guy over and over again. I don't think his character in these movies are the same as Deadpool. People don't say, oh, yeah, it is. No, you watch Deadpool, he's much more confident and much more flippant. He's much more cocky. You just say that's also in Blade Trinity or even, uh, what was the other film? I like Six Underground, but he had, he was the type in that. This is a different type of character because he's much more reserved. He's sarcastic, but he's a lot more nervous. He's a lot more cautious. He... I almost want to say he's the straight man for Sam Jackson's character. And in a way, he I mean, that's kind of the thing is that usually... 
with Ryan Reynolds, he'd be like the Sam Jackson energy, you know, flip, you know, sarcastic, cool. That's not the case here. I mean, Red Notice, for example, Red Notice, that's more like his Deadpool type of character, only PG-13. This, say with the sequel, he, I he's much more concerned and nervous and, uh, uh, like I said, reserved, like the things I just said. And so that's cool to see Ryan Reynolds in these films is to play kind of the same wavelength, but still a different enough type of character. I mean, for people who say he just plays the same as Deadpool, I think that's being unfair. And hey, I like Ryan Reynolds, uh, both of these films, which I, yeah, I'll get to the sequel next time. I think they're way better than Red Notice. And Red Notice, here's the thing, both of these films cost $70 million a piece. So both of them combined cost less than Red Notice. Red Notice costs $200 million. If I watch these again, well, this again, and the, the next one's coming up next. If I did that, and it was fresh on my mind, Red Nose, I think, would have been a rant. Not in the top 10 worst of the year, but like these are way better, in my opinion, than Red Nose. Because how the hell did Red Nose cost $200 million alone with sh crappy action scenes? But these have better action. They're more faster paced. Uh, funnier. And the ability to be R-rated. And both of them combined cost less than 70 and 70. 140 million. That cost 200 million. <laughs> I don't get it. And... I will say the the opening like first twenty minutes is still entertaining. You know, everything going fine with Ryan Reynolds, then when the shit hits the fan, where things have gone from there. Uh, but I wouldn't say it really got. It didn't really get funny until about a third of the way in, when Ryan and Sam are finally together and. They're getting to know each other's rhythm and pattern. That's what it really tits in the gear. But even before there's entertaining stuff. Like the little bit where Ryan Reynolds gets a call from his ex and the thing says pure evil. <laughs> That's the name he's given to her. Or when Sam Jackson calls Sam Hayek and they're very volatile. But yet they can be very sweet with each other. And that's carried even more in the sequel. Or when, uh, action-wise, Sam Jackson is in this caravan to be taken this, to where he needs to go. It gets hit by bad guys, and Sam Jackson gets a gun and shoots. You see blood squibs. Maybe not every single one, but there's quite a bit of blood squibs. Which then, I mean, I love the John Wick films. That's one of the few things I complain is... Why are they not using as much squibs compared to, like, this film? I also like that they show Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson pretty much being on equal footing in terms of action. Now... Spoiler alert for the next review. I do like the sequel. In fact, I find that a little bit underrated. I don't think it's as bad as people made out to be. I don't think it's as good as this one, though. Because this one, I thought, had... I felt like it had more action. I felt like the action scenes were a bit more bigger. Like, there's a car chase. And Sam Jackson's in a boat. And it's going through the canal. And then Ryan Reynolds is in a motorcycle. And they're all connected with each other. And the way that's edited. You can see the location. It's a beautiful location. And Ryan Reynolds is able to do this and this and this. And shows that he is a good bodyguard. He's very capable as a job. And each one gets their moments. Sam gets his moments. And then Ryan gets his moments. Sam gets his moments shooting the bad guys. But then Ryan gets his moments stopping this guy from shooting a rocket at Sam Jackson. 
Same with later in the third act. Sam is in a pretty cool car chase that goes through the streets and on the beach. And he goes and the bad guy gets hit by a semi-truck. There's a bit where Sam does a 180 and Sam's shooting in front to the bad guys in the windshield. Because he's going backward and they're going forward. Well edited. Not holding back. I mean entertaining. And then you cut to Ryan Reynolds. He's in a cool... It's a foot chase, but at least to find these guys in the kitchen, beating them up. And then he's chased to a guy into like a sporting goods store. And he's using all this stuff. And use a nail gun. Uh, yeah, I thought that was... Uh, I'm trying to remember what... There's something else I'm thinking of. A chain. That's an axe and a chain. Yeah, uses an axe and a chain. But I want mean, you. That's a really cool fight scene. Um, there's a bit of that missing in the sequel. I think because this feels more like an action film with comedy. The sequel is more comedy first, with some action, and I do think that's one of the reasons why I do feel this film is better than the sequel. But again, the sequel I did enjoy. I don't think it's as bad as people may out to be, but... And I do think the sequel is, is fairly fast-paced. And that's that's one thing. I think the sequel is a bit better paced. Because again, this one I'm enjoying the first 20-30 minutes, but it feels like it doesn't truly start going... I would say... When they're asleep in the hotel... And Ryan's like, okay, we gotta find the intelligent way. And then Sam jumps, oh, motherfucker. And Ryan's like, holy fucking shit. What's this guy doing? And then he jumps. Not jumps, he climbs down. Like, the movie's enjoyable for little bits here and there. But that's where the movie really kicks off. I, yeah, I do think the second film, I think the second film is shorter. And it does feel like it goes by a bit faster pace. I... Some people were annoyed by Selma Hayek in the second one. I actually really enjoyed it. I think she was the, very funny in that. That's just me. And the, you know, she has little bits in this film entertaining, but I think in the sequel she's even more funny. So I, I still enjoy them. I do think they work well together. And that's why I can excuse the sequel not having as big of action, but because I was I still found it rather entertaining. And that way it also doesn't come off as like a copy of this one. But, uh... Yeah, Ryan and Sam well together. I think they have great chemistry with each other. Like when they're singing the songs and Sam Jackson's is annoying. So Ryan's like, oh, I saw the sign and open up my eyes. I saw the sign. I didn't, there are critics and other people that kind of shrug these movies off. They didn't bring anything new to the table. But at the same time, that's kind of my thing. Yes, a lot of times I do want new stuff brought to the table. But at the end of the day, I do just want to be entertained. And that's subjective. That's going to be subjective to everybody. What ent entertains you might not entertain me and vice versa. And even if it's familiar ground or cliche ground, if you're entertaining, at the end of the day, that is truly all that matters to me. And whether it be when they're stopped by bad guys and Sam Jackson shoots them and things seem fine. But then they had guns in the trunk and it shoots out like fireworks and one shoots up and pulls up the bad guy's van. So they can't take that. So Sam's laughing while Ryan is just sad. You know, that got to check out me because of the behavior of our two leads. And with Patrick Hughes, some of the way he directed scenes, the flashback with Sam telling Ryan how he first met Selma Hayek. And it's a bar, and you have this on, hello. And the way it's done in slow motion, and Selma Hayek 
beating the shit out of people, shows her ass, and Sam's like, <laughs> which I don't blame him, which nowadays you probably can't deal with, because it's too on PC. But these films, like, they just embrace more of the fun. Sit back, enjoy, have fun. And these films were fun. <clears throat> and this one, when uh, they find a ride, and Sam Jacks is telling him something, Ryan's like, why don't you fuck yourself? And how did he say it? Why don't you go fuck you wrote it us? And he realizes the whole thing, the whole van is filled with nuns. That seems like someone that would be in an 80s or early 90s movie. Like you just say that's a, a joke you, you've... It feels like a joke I've kind of seen before, but not quite this way. But, it, like, that's nostalgia done right. Is that copying something from this specific movie, like Ghostbusters Afterlife, copying the fucking first Ghostbusters, including the entire fucking ending... Or The Force Awakens copying pretty much everything from A New Hope. This is like, okay, that feels like it would fit. Like, that's a better way of doing nostalgia. Whether it was on purpose or not. Like, that seems like something could be in a, a midnight run. And Rob De Niro would have said that to Charles Grodin. And then you realize where he was at. And again, I also like that it shows that both men are capable. One's not weaker because of the other. And so like Sam's going to take flowers to showcase to the Selma, who's in a jail cell. And Sam's going to put it here. But while he's doing it, you see Ryan Reynolds fuck up all who's trying to kill Sam. And it shows that what he can do. Shows that he's capable as well. And that was a little bit missing in the sequel. That's one of the, the few things I would complain about the sequel is Ryan Reynolds doesn't seem nearly as effective of a bodyguard compared to this one. Because it's trying to be much more comedic and like he gets thrown in water after he does save Selma Hayek but then he gets thrown into water or he's getting ready to do a, a bat, you know, car chase but then he's been passed. I mean it did make me laugh so at least it it gave me something. I mean, I'm just explaining why I do think the sequel is fun and entertaining. If you like the first one, I do think it's a worthy sequel, and I'll get more to that next time. But I, I did. I think the action scenes they just felt a bit bigger, felt a bit grander, and again, Ryan Reynolds seemed like they were on equal footing, action wise. Again, there's some entertaining, funny moments, at least to me. How Ryan Rose is so frustrated with Sam that he just talked to someone. I hope they kill him, I really do. You know, he single-handed, he single-handedly ruined the word motherfucker. How do you do that? How do you ruin that word? <laughs> or later on, where Sam's like, I will bust a cap of your ass. Please, motherfucker. And Ryan's like, why are we always yelling? Or, of course, the bit where they're driving and then they hit something and Ryan Reynolds crashes through. And then Sam's like, what happened to the seatbelt rule? Me explaining it might not sound funny. It just, for, I mean, for me, the way it played out and the way these two interacted with each other made it rather entertaining. I mean, spoiler alert, by the end, Ryan's able to do his job as a bodyguard and Sam takes down a fucking helicopter. You know, I even like the bit at the end where Daryl Ullman tells this like deep pretentious thought that a lot of times villains would do, especially in movies nowadays, and Sam just laughs it off as, I don't give a shit about that. This is what you did for my bodyguard. This is what, no, this is what you did to my bodyguard. And Daryl Ullman's like, who? I just... <laughs> Uh, fucks his day up. I like some of the song choices. Like in the flashback with how Ryan Reynolds met his ex-girlfriend. And he had the song, I want to know what love is. I want you to tell me. 
So, I mean, it had a good amount of laughs and chuckles. Two leads who had great chemistry with each other. Solid action sequences. I mean, I really don't have a lot of issues with it. Like I said, Dear Omen is fine, but the plot is... The plot itself is not going to engage you. So I guess if you don't care about the two leads and their chemistry, you're not really going to get much out of it. It's not like the plot... Same with the sequel. The plot isn't really going to grab you. And I'm not saying that should be an excuse. You can still work on the story and plot to be a bit more engaging than it is. But at the same time, I am willing to overlook that if... What's your main course? Okay, in this case, it's humor and comedy mixed in. Maybe what's the difference? Humor as in some of the dialogue, some of the asides, the sniping at each other. And then like the, the almost slapstick of just going through that window. And well done to the stunt. Like how they did that, it looked rather good and smooth. And a tuck roll and a stand up. I don't know how they did that, but that looked I thought rather good compared to you know other bigger budget movies. I mean these movies cost like seventy million at most a piece. I mean compared to other movies, that's not a whole lot. In this era where so many movies like I did Red Notice cost two hundred million. How? How? The the salaries. Well Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds at this point. Ryan Rose had done Deadpool, and when did he do Deadpool 2? Was that before this, or after his Deadpool 2? I can't remember when Deadpool 2 came out, the year-wise. Uh, I think Deadpool 1 was 2016, I believe. So I think this is before Deadpool 2. I can't remember. I'm not good with years. But yeah, I thought this was a lot of fun. I thought it was very entertaining. And I thought it was still a lot of fun to watch again. So with that said, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.